can you remember your earliest memory of fashion? Because you work across different arenas, you, know, you do magazine, but you also work with designers. I'm interested whether it was your first sort of interaction with, fa with fashion was a magazine or whether it was clothes or whether it was designing. What, do you remember sort of where it came from? Uh, no. I mean, my first item of clothing that I really loved was some Bieber glitter wellies when I was about <laughs> two. I just thought they were everything and I'd wear them constantly. Um, so that was my first garment, I suppose. And then... Um, no, I don't really remember. My dad took me shopping for school shoes and we got these really inappropriate ones. I was about 12 or 11 even. We came back with basically winkle pickers, really like the like <laughs> the Marc Jacobs spring summer ones at the moment. And they were just, my mum just went mental. She's like, you're wearing her feet. And I was like, they're so cool. And I was like, wore them with my socks scrunched down in my school uniform. Um, yeah, I wasn't very good at school uniforms. So I, I definitely started to get a, a big kind of buzz off fashion and that was just going down this kind of punk shop in Bristol with my dad mm. school shoes <laughs> so is that sort of what drew you in that element of like I guess the way that fashion can make you feel the way it can whether it's like your glittery wellies or your sort of slightly subversive school shoes is it that kind of element of transformation that that fashion comes from is that what excited you yeah I mean I hadn't planned to you know hadn't planned to go and get wild school shoes but once you did and once you'd had that kind of buzz maybe it was just like you know it when you know it kind of thing mm. yeah. and there's no going back it's like there's no way I was going to like wear normal shoes after that and it's stuck ever yeah. since you <laughs> that's so funny um, I'm interested in sort of the point though where you started to think about fashion as something that you wanted to to pursue in kind of a career context because you didn't you've had quite an interesting background when you studied because you moved between England and then you went to Italy as well didn't you was the, yeah did you always know you wanted to do something sort of creative um, I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do at all other than um, hang around with fun people and do things that interested me. I mean, I had no um, notion of career. I don't know if I do, <laughs> I'm trying. Um, I really, yeah, just kind of followed what I wanted to do and didn't plan. Mm. And I guess that in itself is one way of you know, finding out what you do is like taking a foundation, but just by moving countries, different scenes, mm. um, until I found something that I really liked. Mm. But yeah, there's never been it's any sort planning. of career planning. I think I didn't go to career, you know, at school when you have to do career guidance, or whatever it's called, and you go and see the counselor, not the counselor, you go and see the um, careers advisor. Careers advisor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I might have not gone to that. But um, I was quite into the idea of um, working in art galleries, and I did do for a while, but then I realised it wasn't very much fun. Not as much fun as fashion people were having, so I kind of switched. Talk to me about the very earliest parts of Fashion East and where that idea came from and what, what it was like to set up something like that. So the reason Fashion East um, happened in the first place was that... I really just loved um, House of Jazz, Hazel and Pablo, and that whole scene. Um, I'd sort of moved to East London and really just straight away, luckily, found that whole little gang and really got on with them and was having fun with them and believed in their talent. And um, I was in a position at the Old Truman Brewery where I could offer them like a free venue because luckily the guy that runs it, my boss, um, is a very cool guy, eccentric, believes in supporting young talent, and I was lucky enough to just land on my feet in that job and I'm still there. That was 1996. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of amazing because I'd never been able to hold down a job or um, been interested in a job enough to stay more than about a week usually. So um, very lucky and all those things came together and Hayes and Pablo were just great and I still, you know, adore them to this day and see a lot of them. And they really were the ones that just inspired me to go, hang on, I can do more than just give you a free warehouse at Truman's, we can um, get some sponsorship, we can do this properly, we can try and make it better um, and take all that annoying stuff off of you that you have to organise, you know, the mm. show side of it, the production, which I kind of enjoyed doing it from organising parties and gigs in Naples. Mm. So I kind of really enjoyed that bit anyway. So it's very natural, the kind of division of they're doing the collection, I'm trying to organise all the back end stuff. Um, and 
some great people came on board to help me because I knew nobody in fashion. I was just a girl that ran around Truman's renting out the spaces. Um, and so brilliant people came on board and helped and are still amazing to this day. And it's, you know, like the Mandy Leonards, mm. Mel Ricky, Sarah Mawa, Harriet Quick from Vogue, all these kind of really cool chicks that were just like, okay, do this, no, you should do that, do it this way. I know so-and-so, I'll call them. Just, you know, my kind of, my angels that mm. um, guided me through the kind of what not to do. Because I didn't know anything about London Fashion Week. Mm. All I really knew of London was, I like Vivian Westwood. I have one of her corsets. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny that you say you didn't know about London Fashion because now, like, I don't think people can imagine London fashion without Fashion East. You know, it's such a huge part of all, all that people love about London, whether it's that kind of fresh design talent or some people being a bit sort of supportive of younger people. I think that's something that's really intrinsic to sort of our London DNA. Did you? Was there a point where you kind of realised that it becomes such a huge part of the city that it kind of was it the point where you started to show on skit? I don't know if there was I don't a... know. Do you know what, Leo? I really don't know because I, was, I think I was just too busy doing it. I was just trying to make it, you know, happen, like my small bit of it, which was looking after, you know, a little handful of designers that I thought were great each season. And I think I was so busy, the, you know, just trying to get things going that next time you look up, it's like everyone's doing it and into <laughs> it. And it's like, you're like, oh, wow, that's good. Because, yeah. you know, when I first started doing it, everyone would be like, why? And... I'd go and see the British Fashion Council and just say, hi, by the way, I'm Lulu, I'm going to do this thing over in East London. They'd be like, OK, bye then. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then like gradually over time, it was like more and more people were kind of getting on board and helping young designers and, and it became kind of a thing. And now, you know, London kind of excels at that and it's very exciting to have mm. witnessed that all happen. You touched on something interesting there where you talked about you know, London is very much about that kind of collaborative spirit, that idea of everyone helping each other out, I think is feels very London. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Mm. I don't know, yeah, where that comes from. I think it's from the friendships that designers make at college. So, you know, like, if they're lucky enough to have gone to St Martin's or wherever and they've made friends and, um, yeah, they just sort of stay friends and there's that spirit of... Um, Definitely at Fashion East because the three of them show together. Yeah, it's like you are a collective, and there's strength in numbers, and you look out for each other and you help each other, mm. which is kind of unusual. And so lovely. they're not ever over competitive with each other. Healthily competitive, I think. I think it's good that they are. Mm. Yeah, they have to be because they will be out in the you know world of retail. But um, what's lovely about Fashion East is it's not overly bothered at, at the very early stages about the retail side of fashion and things aren't products of like beautiful ideas and mm. garments and it's an energy or it's a feeling it's not so much like um a range plan a rail of clothes price mm. point market position and all that stuff that they have to learn um if they're gonna you know have a viable commercial business mm. if they want one and you know that's up to them are people starting too early do you think do you think there is a because i always think it's so great in London that we have these amazing art colleges and art schools, but then also there's that kind of culture where people, I think people love a story when someone like just leaves St Martin's and they set up their own label and they do really well. You know, is there too much of a pressure to do that? Should people go away and sort of hone their craft a little bit and then, and then come back? Or is it just down to the individual? I mean, what is sad and what we are seeing more of at Fashion East is that um, kids that can't afford to get through the MA are having to come straight from BA at college and that is a shame and it's, you know, that's the world we're living in now with education cuts that unfortunately kids that could have done an MA and really benefited from it are coming straight into business and not really equipped and um, it's just something I'm aware of and, mm. and very frustrated by. Mm. I want to talk a little bit about picking the designers because that's something that I'm so fascinated by and how that you know that you've got this sort of a future star. When they come in and they sh they're showing you their work and their portfolio and you're trying to pick sort of the three, mm -hmm. do you know you've got something really special? Is it is it instinct? Is that how you do it? Because you, you've said that in interviews before. Yeah, instinct is kind of probably something in myself that I trust and that I think I can rely on. Mm. I'm not really logical. I'm not 
I'm quite emotionally like very young I would say like <laughs> not very intellectual so instinct is what I go on um, and yeah mm. I kind of yeah you can just feel it when it's right and when it's not it's um it's one of those things it's like when you've got chemistry with someone you know they don't have to be hot looking but if if you know there's that thing isn't there mm -hmm. what can you do mm. you know it when you know it I mean it's just because all the different levels that you end up working with them on you know you work whether it's putting on the show but there is also that element of like helping them build their brand and think about all the different angles of what they're doing and it got me really interested in what people like who matters in fashion in receiving something like is it the buyers is it press is it you know like bloggers and people online and it got me thinking you know when you're working with a designer do you think about that do you think about how it's received and how and who matters if oh god yeah I mean god yeah it, otherwise it would be like a vanity project for me just to you know get my kicks on you know that would be that would be crazy so. but is it scary though when you pick something on instinct and then you're like god how are people gonna take to this instinct is good but I wouldn't do and you know be where I am and the designers wouldn't have the great advice they have without um, me bringing in the help of the panel. I mean, the Fashionese panel are incredible people that mm. give up their time and expertise and like, you know, we sit down sometimes with the designers one-on-one -on -one and just really, I don't want to say grill them, that's wrong, just really kind of like try and get into, inside their heads and say, what is it you're trying to do here or express or where do you want to be in a year, what stock is, to, you know, mm. let us try and help you get there and mm. we really, I guess we workshop it, you know, we, we sit there with them going, you know, mm. tell us everything. There's a great openness and a great kind of friendliness, and um, I ho hope anyway. I, I mean, I always find that the designers get a lot out of it, and they say they do, mm. and that it, I hope it's not intimidating because mm. we tend to just sit and chat like this and just really try and figure out how we can help them. Um, and yeah, my panel are incredible. The people on it. I mean, like I say, I know nothing. I moved here from Italy. I worked in Chem Market. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a goth, I worked in an art gallery, I knew nothing about fashion, I didn't know the first person until I bumped into um, House of Jazz down the pub. Mm. <laughs> really I didn't, so, you know. There's a flip side to London which I think is as much as people, I feel like critics and journalists in London are so incredibly supportive of sort of London talent and people are so sort of willing people to do well. But the flip side to that is you often see people criticise retailers for not sort of picking up on enough of the London talent that we have here. And you know, people say you can't buy stuff. Mm. Do you notice that? Does that I know exactly you? who you're talking about. And it worked. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's, um, it's interesting how, what's the word, symbiotic? No, um, yes. hand in hand it all goes here. I think there's um, a great sense of the press having got behind the whole young designer story in London over the years and then more slowly obviously because there's more at stake the retailers have kind of followed suit and it's great to see like mm. you know I was going around the shops last weekend and seeing how many people that we've worked with or that I know mm. are there in the shops mm. and selling and yeah it's great to see the whole thing really as a machine kind of rolling together but do you think there's a lot more that could be done? I think, because I, I even find that you'll go into big stores especially and you walk around and you're like, where is this person, where is this person? Why isn't that translating? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm all for like the smaller independent stores as well. Like, you know, Machine A is being super supportive and stocking yeah. lots of interesting kids that may not have another London stockist otherwise. Um, and I think over time people will probably get together and do more you know, small stores or different ways of selling. Mm -hmm. um, it's something I'd love to do. I've always thought it's the missing link in what we do is to sell our own designers. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to ask that if that's something you think about. Yeah, I mean, I'd love it. You just need the capital, don't you? It's like I could I could buy their collections all day long. I know exactly what I'd buy and what I think would sell, but mm. who am I to, you know, I can't, I can't do that mm. physically yet. Yeah, there's so much more I want to do. So if there's... We've talked about kind of fun and being sort of optimistic, but if there was one thing that you would could advise a young designer, if they're sort of coming to you or they wanted to do something like Fashion East or they want to have their own label, what's the thing that you think is the most important thing that they should, they should do or they should sort of 
an attitude they should have, what would you advise them? Um, get advice from the best people they can. Um, beg for 10 minutes with someone who's brilliant and knows what they're doing. Um, that really is, I think, how all that knowledge is kind of handed down and doors are opened and help is given. And um, it's easier said than done because obviously people are busy and you can't just knock on their door and go, hi, can you give me 10 minutes of mm. advice? It doesn't really work like that, but um, maybe the more determined people can kind of find a way of getting that advice. Mm. Um, and it is invaluable. Mm. Sorry, it's not easier to follow advice, is it? It's quite hard to get knock on doors and get that, but um, I think the ones that are more likely to succeed will find a way. Mm. That's what I find. You have to be willing to go that extra mile, don't you? You have to be willing mm. to do it. So like you say, it is about an attitude and it's a determination, and that's one thing I've seen it over the years with the fashionist designers, that they have lots and lots of determination. It's different from delusion, which, you know, a lot of people might have, and it will get them nowhere, but determination, hard work, those are the things really. Mm. But knowing how to take advice when someone is trying to hand it to you, someone that knows what they're doing is really important. Mm. 